last class we were discussing variance and covariance. So, the covariance of two random variables is defined as expectation of x y minus expectation of x times expectation of y uh, whenever it is well defined okay. And we said that the random variables x and y are said to be uncorrelated if covariance of x y equal to 0 okay. Uh, and we were in the middle of proving a theorem saying which says that if x and y are independent then they are necessarily uncorrelated okay. But the converse of, of course is not true we gave an example uncorrelated random variables may be dependent they need not be independent okay. So, I will state that uh, the theorem uh, I think I did not state it in, uh, very precisely. So, I will state the theorem more precisely today. So, you take this statement rather than the previous one and I was in the middle of the proof but let me state the theorem properly if x and y are independent random variables with expected absolute x less than infinity and expected absolute y less than infinity. then expected x y exists and covariance of x y equal to 0 okay. So, this is the statement of I did not I stated it in plain English I think yesterday right. So, this is the proper statement. So, all you need here is expectation of absolute x and expectation of absolute y being finite okay. Then in that case you are guaranteed that expected x y exists and in particular expected x y will be equal to expectation of x times expectation of y. Okay. So, so it is generally not the case that if x and y have uh, well defined so in this sense finite expected value it is generally not the case that expected x y is well defined okay but if they are independent it is automatically well defined okay and in fact they are uncorrelated okay. this is the statement proof we we started out saying proof we did it for a simple case right if x and y are simple we we wrote uh, so we had this kind of a representation right a i i a i oh i big a i and y is equal to sum over i j equals 1 through m b j i b j right. Then we wrote out x y as the double sum a i b j indicator a i intersection b j and then we argued that a i and b j are independent for all i and j right that was because x and y are independent random variables and then we were able to prove that x and y are in fact uncorrelated okay. Now we have to, so now we have to extend it for any non-negative measurable random any non-negative random variables right. So, this is previous class. So, this was done. So, next suppose x and y are non-negative 
Now what do I do? Consider a approximating sequence, right? So consider let xn and yn be simple uh, the sequences of simple okay sequences of sequences of simple random variables such that xn increases to x and yn increases to y okay such an such an approximation always exists we know that right we can explicitly find such a approximation from below so i'm obviously heading towards an application of the monotone convergence theorem right so obviously then xn yn increases to xy agreed they are all non negative and increasing right so xn yn is also increasing and it approaches xy correct okay we have expectation of xy we have expectation of xy is equal to limit n tending to infinity expectation of x and y n y m c t but x n and y n are so so okay so wait so x n and y x n y n uh, so the way you can t do it is x n and y n in your approximation right are independent also right because in if you just specifically take the the you remember the how we constructed if you had given any measurable function non negative measurable measurable function g the way you construct gn the approximating sequence you can show that xn and yn are also the the approximating sequences are also independent of each other all right since x n and y n are independent by construction right this is what i mean right so with the way we constructed the approximating sequence you can you can verify that they are in fact x n and y n are in fact independent okay expectation of x y equal to so this will be limit n tending to infinity so you know that for simple random variables you have shown that independent random variables are uncorrelated previous lecture right so this will become expectation of x n times expectation of y n correct now so this limit so this limit can be this is obviously limit uh, expectation of x n time limit expectation of y n because both the limits exist right why do both the limit exist from well it's actually because of mct right so again by so you apply M mct so this is limit this times limit that right so the limit of a product is the product of the limits if when all whenever all limits exist but here all limits do exist right so that will be equal to so this is by mct again this will be expectation of x times expectation of y okay any questions so you proved it for 
non negative random variables. So, I have not assumed here. So, if you notice, I have proved this is a very general proof, right? I have not assumed that x, uh, x is discrete or y is continuous or any such thing, right? I have not assumed joint densities, I have not assumed PMFs, right? It could be a very any general random variable x and y, whenever they are independent, they are uncorrelated. Well, I have proved it for the non negative case when x and y are both non negative. If I have to deal with random variables that are possibly negative, then I have to use x plus x minus, right? Uh, more generally, we write x is equal to x plus minus x minus, y is equal to y plus minus y minus. and complete the proof. This is there in your lecture notes, okay. So, I am not writing that down. You explicitly compute, uh, you write x as x plus minus x minus y plus as y plus minus y minus, expand the whole thing out and then you can prove that. So, when x and y are independent, x plus and y plus, x plus and y minus, they will all be independent, right. You have to, uh, that, that you can show easily, right, because in fact, that is a question in your uh, quiz right after all what is x plus x plus is max of x comma 0 suppose you want to show that x plus and y minus are independent y minus is minus min of y comma 0 right they are both functions of x and y so they must be independent right so th all these guys will turn out to be independent x plus y plus x plus y minus x minus y plus x minus y minus right and then invoke this for non negative random variables and you can get it okay just write out the whole, write out this product and you will get it, okay. You have to, that is where you have to invoke this, okay. If this were not true, then you may have some infinity minus infinity problems, okay. Okay, any questions? Okay. So, so I have I am next going to talk about uh, the variance of sum of two random variables, right. So, we know that, so if you have x and y are any random variables not necessarily independent or uncorrelated or any such thing, we know that expectation is always linear, right. Expected x plus y is, is always equal to expectation of x plus expectation of y, that is just linearity of integrals, right. But the variance is not necessarily always, uh, you cannot always say that the variance of a sum of two random variables is sum of variances, right. That is not true, okay. So, I will just uh, state a proposition that says if x and y are random variables, then sigma x plus y squared is equal to sigma x squared plus sigma y squared plus twice covariance of x comma y. Okay. So, if you are interested in computing the variance of a sum of two random variables, then you have to sum the two variances and add twice the covariance, okay. But if x and y are uncorrelated, you can just add the two variances or if x and y are in particular independent, you can add the variances and say that is the variance of the sum. Okay. Similarly, for n random variables, how do you think this will this will uh, generalize? <coughs> if you had sum of n random variables, you will first all sum all the variances, plus you will have all the possible covariate twice 
all these co covariances, a covariance x i j for all i less than j, right? You have to sum sum it like that. Okay, so it generalizes in a straightforward manner. Okay, so just proving this is very easy, right? You can just write out. Uh, so what is this? This is after all expectation of. Uh, so this is expectation of x plus y squared minus. Uh, yeah, so let me do it like this minus expectation of well expectation of x plus y the whole squared, right? Great. Now this is equal to so this so this is equal to that. That's equal to you can just expand this guy out, right? So expectation of x squared plus y squared plus two x y. Uh, minus expectation of uh, x squared minus expectation of y squared well so what I mean here is expectation of x plus y the whole square okay so this is just expectation of x plus expectation of y okay. Uh, so the, then I will get minus two expectation of x, expectation of y, right? So then I have what I want, right? So this and that will combine to give you variance of x. That and that will give you variance of y. So pl plus two expected x y minus two expected x times expected y, right? So this is this will be equal to that, right? If x and y were uncorrelated, you will have this term will cancel with that term. So you will have just the sum of the variances. Okay, so that is just a minor point. So generally, if you are given independent random variables or uncorrelated random variables, you can add the variances and say that is the variance of the sum. But generally, you cannot do that. Okay, you have to have all these covariance terms. Okay. So if covariance of x y is something positive, the variance will only be greater, right? But if it's a negative co correlation, the variance will actually be less than the sum of the variances. Okay, variance of the sum will be less than the sum of the variances if they are negatively correlated. Okay, so that's just a minor thing, right? 